In this video, I'd like to explain some of the concepts of balance of payments, which is a very commonly used term in international economics. And first, we should uh, talk about what balance of payments broadly means. When we talk about balance of payments, it's a, an accounting of all transactions between domestic and foreign agents. And when I say all transactions, that means the purchase and sale of goods, the purchase and sale of services, and purchases and sales of assets involving a domestic citizen and a foreign citizen or institution. It could be government, it could be businesses, any type of uh, transaction. Now these balance of payments uh, is, is, uh, allows us to get a snapshot view of what's happening in an economy in the international uh, in an international context. So a couple things to note about the balance of payments, or as I will often designate it, BOP, it reflects double entry bookkeeping. So this is actually a very important uh, concept in accounting. Now, this is not an, uh, an accounting course, but it is a uh, uh, course where this concept will be able to be used. And the bottom line with double entry bookkeeping is that every transaction has a debit and a credit of equal value. Now, let's define what we mean by credit and debit in this international context. A credit, which is often designated as a plus, is, and, and I should say that plus doesn't mean it's a good thing, it just means that it's, it's designated by that uh, positive sign. That's an outflow of value for which a payment is due the home country. So a credit in the US would be something that, that uh, creates an outflow of, uh, uh, for which a payment is due. Another way to think about this, and this is gonna be an important uh, version of this, is that a credit is going to result in an increase in liabilities or a decrease in assets to the country for which the credit is made. The debit, designated as a negative, is an inflow of value for which domestic agents must pay, pay foreigners. And that's going to be a decrease in liabilities or an increase in assets. So let's think about this in a practical example. Let's say that the US purchases 10 million dollars of Chinese goods. Okay, that's a common type of thing that might happen in an international context. The concept of double entry bookkeeping means that there's going to be a $10 million credit and a $10 million debit in the U.S. accounts. Okay, so there's going to be an import of $10 million worth of goods
And let's think about this in the, in the, in the context of this, of this example. So what we have is an increase in the amount of stuff that American citizens now have. It's a kind of asset. So the goods are now going to be inside the United States and will be able to be uh, used by domestic consumers. The payment, so that's the, uh, that's the debit part. There is an increase in assets, I should probably put goods here just to be clear about this. The credit part is that the United States will now have to sh ship a check for $10 million to the Chinese. So the payment of $10 million is going to show up as a credit. Let's think about this. That is a decrease in the assets in the United States. $10 million worth of, of, of checking account that is now transferred to the Chinese. So the single purchase of $10 million worth of goods has both a debit and a credit. All right? Let's suppose instead that Europeans purchase five million dollars of US corporate bonds. There's gonna be both a credit and a debit. Okay. So the the export of the bonds Okay, because essentially the U.S. is going to be sending these bonds to foreigners. So the U.S. export the bonds, and this is all from the United States standpoint. Okay, that's going to be a decrease in the assets inside the United States because the bonds are no longer here. They're now held by, uh, by the Europeans. Okay, so that's the credit part. The, the payment for the bonds by Europeans will be a debit. Okay, so let's look in to this, this is an increase in the assets in the United States because there's a $5 million check coming into the United States. So in principle, every transaction, whether it be the purchase and sale of a good, the purchase and sale of an asset, the purchase and sale of a service between the United States and a foreign, uh, foreign entities is going to have both this credit and debit equal amounts for both. Now, what does this mean? Since we have the double entry bookkeeping, this implies that the total credits for a given country must equal the total debits by construction. Every time there's a transaction on one side, there's an equal amount on the other side. Now, this means that in the uh, balance of payments context, that the overall balance of payments must equal 
zero by construction. Now what we're going to see is that when you start to break up different parts of the balance of payments, that these, this overall balance of payments, each component may not add up to zero. And so let me just introduce some of these concepts that you have probably heard of. You may have heard about the trade deficit. Okay, that's a component of the balance of payments, a subset of the balance of payments. Uh, and this is also uh, uh, generally when people say this, they're talking about merchandising trade. When they talk about the trade deficit, although we'll be more precise in just a, in just a moment, you may have heard about a current account deficit, or for that matter, surplus. For example, China runs a big current account surplus. And you also may hear about a balance of payments surplus or deficit. Now, none of these is inconsistent with the overall balance of payments being equal to zero. The total surplus, or total de uh, debits and total credits being equal to zero, because these are subcategories within this overall balance of payments. And I'll have a video about each one of these um, uh, as well. So individual components may not, not add up to zero, even if the overall does. Okay, so this is a, a brief overview of balance of payments. Uh, we will talk about the, uh, at least some, an overview of some of the, uh, the more detailed accounts in a subsequent video.